Recently, in the deserts of Egypt, a long-lost ancient city they are referring to as the Rise of Aten has been unearthed. They haven't been able to uncover the entire thing yet, but what they have been able to determine is that the city, for some unknown reason, was abandoned. They've found a few skeletons here and there, but not as many as you would expect. And this is a recurring theme in the ancient world. We find cities that are perfectly intact, no evidence of attack, no evidence of natural disaster, that are just abandoned for some reason. You would have to ask yourself a question why in today's video. I would like to expound on that idea a little bit and also draw some parallels to what we have found in Antarctica. And maybe the two events are really tied more closely than what science would have you believe. Now, a lot of these ancient cities have the same building technique. Simple masonry walls created with 90 degree angles, some rooms larger, some rooms smaller, of course, entryways. But sometimes you see something like on the left where they have created this kind of snake effect, for lack of a better term. You'd have to ask yourself why they would bother, why they would um, take the time, because the only way you could really appreciate this would be from above, because at ground level, a wall is a wall. I'm not sure if this grants any kind of uh, strategic advantage. I can't see how it would. But very strangely, this image that you're looking at on the left is one that I found in Antarctica a long time ago. You had to zoom in very closely. I enhanced the image a little bit just to show the contrast. But there are, on the surface of Antarctica, many locations where you can see what looks like the remnants of building structures. I also used this image in a more recent video. The image on the far left in the green is from an island near Florida. And there is this inexplicable clearing on the middle of this island that is virtually identical to the shape of the continent of Antarctica. Now, you would have to ask yourself, why would the Calusa Indians create such a shape? They would have had no idea what a place like Antarctica looked like from above. How would they know? And more importantly, the only way you could appreciate this would be from above. Now, here's the article over here. Archaeologists discover 3,000-year-old Egyptian city left as if it were yesterday. I'll give you this link. But the idea is this. The idea is that there are places in Antarctica that show evidence of habitation, even through the ice and snow, based on the way that science determines for itself in other locations where there was and where there was not habitation. And if a catastrophic event occurred, what would be left? Just the buildings, just the walls. And as we know, with ice and snow, when it falls, when it um, covers the ground and coats an area, everything left underneath kind of gets pronounced in its uh, visual aspect. Meaning when you're looking out, for example, over a large empty cornfield, for example, large empty field, nothing in it. When it's just the ground, you may or may not see different things, you know, that are out there like anomalies, like rocks or maybe a log or a tree. But when the snow hits and everything turns white, all of those little things become a lot easier to see. Now, I just wanted to zoom in here and show you this as well. This is another location that I will give you that shows what looks like 
the remnants of building structures on the surface of Antarctica. How they have missed this, I don't know. I don't think they have. Because a lot of these regions where I've found this, they have imaged inexplicably in very high res. Other areas of Antarctica are very low res. You can't see much. So you'd have to ask yourself a question. Why would they take the time to high res image places like this if they didn't think this was the case? To me, this is one of the biggest smoking guns of all because you just don't see 90 degree angles and things like this regularly. And one of the uh, more clear examples is on the other side of the continent. I want to zoom out here and show you this. No one is ever going to convince me that what we're looking at here is just how nature naturally creates cracks and crevices. I mean, look at this little section right here. We see four rectangles clearly delineated by some type of man-made created depressions. I mean, how many, just in this image, how many 90 degree angles can you count? Well, there's four here, four here, four here. These perfectly straight lines organized in ways that we see in cityscapes, just like we saw with this issue in Egypt. They uncover these walls and they can determine from that how many people lived there, perhaps what they were doing, what, how they earned a living, how their days were constructed. And you can see this from space in Antarctica. How they could ever definitively say that there was never any uh, native habitation on a continent that is five times, pardon me, that is the fifth largest continent on the planet, larger than all of Europe, with four times the fresh water of the rest of the planet. I just don't know how they do that. Truly. And it's all over Antarctica. It's not like it's just in a few specific places. One second, I clicked on the wrong link. There we go. And as you can see, sometimes um, things don't appear exactly as you would think. But when you look at historical imagery, it's pretty clear something else is going on. Look at these shadows. Clearly the sun is shining over what looks like buildings. I had showed an illustration of a building um, that was very quizzical about a month or two ago where they had these uh, towers, these stacks in the back. And you can almost see one right here in the middle. Some type of a silo for storage. If you abandoned a city that was perfectly habitable, there must have been a good reason. Clearly, we can look in Antarctica and we can see that the climate changed. Something was happening. It probably didn't happen within a matter of weeks, but they knew they had to get out. And they had to go somewhere else. And this is kind of the point that I have made about Antarctica. And perhaps I haven't made it as well as I should have. But... If they left, there would have been one way out. And it would have been this way before this occurred. And we have stories all through this area of giants, of people of 
different races moving north, making their way through here. And the Calusa Indians ended up up here on the very southwestern tip of Florida with a military ability that far exceeded the rest of the Native Americans of the region. I don't think any of that is a coincidence. I think it all ties together. I think it's a lost history of this hemisphere. So I just wanted to uh, cover this today and show that there are things going on in the world a lot more important than Minnesota, a lot more important than Colorado, things that are going to change the world as we know it. God bless, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time.